In an unprecedented move, the European Union voted in September to strip Hungary of its voting rights for allegedly undercutting democracy. Although the vote was largely symbolic, it showed the wide gulf over several issues between the Western European politicians in Brussels and the fiercely independent government of Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Hungary has been treated like a pariah in the Western media over its position on open borders. But Hungary's leaders are smart enough to know that their national values will never please the global left. In New York, I interviewed Hungary's defiant foreign minister, Peter Siarto, who insists Hungary will remain a sovereign Christian nation, which rejects any foreign interference, especially when it comes to its borders and migrants from the Muslim world. Mr. Foreign Minister, what is Hungary's response to the EU decision to punish Hungary over its immigration policy? Well, basically, it's a revenge. Uh, what the uh, European uh, Parliament has decided upon. European Parliament has a majority of MEPs uh, who are pro-migration, absolutely pro-migration. And um, since uh, the Hungarian government has uh, proven in the last three and a half years that migration is a negative phenomenon, migration is dangerous, and migration can and must be stopped, uh, this annoys uh, the majority of the members of the European Parliament, this annoys uh, the bureaucrats in Brussels, this annoys the European Commission, so they made a revenge uh, on Hungary. Illegal migration is the most serious challenge European Union has ever f had to face since its uh, foundation. Uh, illegal migration is an absolutely dangerous uh, uh, phenomenon. Look at Europe. Uh, one and a half million people could uh, enter the territory of the European Union in an absolutely uncontrolled way. No one knew who they were. And uh, since the uh, illegal migration um, uh, has started, uh, 33 major terrorist attacks um, uh, have been committed on the territory of the European uh, Union by uh, persons with a migratory background. We are fed up with the politically correct and hypocritic approach of the European Union. We are fed up with those politicians who say that uh, terrorism is part of metropolitan life. No, it's not. We have to fight against terrorism and we have to tackle the root causes of terrorism. And one of the root causes of terrorism is the illegal migration. How can Hungary continue in an organization where there are, where the gap between these two views is so wide? Look, Hungary is uh, interested in a uh, strong European Union. Uh, but in order to get there, we have a lot of debates. The bad news is that some of our Western European friends question our right to have a debate. And we don't agree with those ones who represent a kind of federalistic approach, which uh, suggests that a United States of Europe should be established. Our position is different. We want a strong European Union based on strong member states. We don't like the approach which is represented by uh, some forces in Europe, which would like to step European Union into a post-national, post-Christian period. Uh, we want a European Union which cares about the national identity, where the countries and the nations are proud of their heritage, about their identity, about their history. So the, the nihilism, the, the valueless uh, approach, uh, which is there, is simply unacceptable uh, for us. If Europe is not going to find the way back to the Christian roots and Christian heritage, then Europe will not be strong again. That's, uh, that's, our, uh, that's our vision here. How has Hungary's history, explain this to Americans, how Hungary's history uh, informs and has influences its immigration policy today? Well, you know, um, Hungarian uh, people are freedom fighters. Uh, <clears throat> we had to fight for our freedom throughout our history many times. In the 1956 revolution, when we fought against the communists. Or we can uh, remember uh, from the history books a uh, uh, long period of time when the Osmans uh, have uh, occupied uh, Hungary. So we, we had to fight for freedom so many times in our history that we really really um, respect and we really can value uh, freedom and liberty. So that's why uh, we will always stick to preserve our rights to make a decision on our own, whom we allow to come to the territory of Hungary, 
whom we do not allow to do so. We will never give up our right to make a decision with whom we would like to live together in our country. We will never give up our right to, uh, to stick to our culture and heritage. We have been a um, Christian country for a millennium. Why should we give it up? Who, who is the one who can judge, overjudge the Hungarian history and the will of the Hungarian people? The Western media makes it appear that uh, you are building a dictatorship. Uh, you have to count with the fact that the Western uh, media, the mainstream media, hates what we are doing. Because uh, this is the same way they behaved during the election campaign uh, here in the United States. You know, I think it was a big shock for uh, mainstream media, both in US and in Europe, to understand that it is not them to pick the president of the United States. It's the American people who make the vote. And in Hungary, it was not the NGOs funded by Soros, it was not the European Commission, it was not the mainstream liberal Western media, but the Hungarian people to make the decision about the future of the country. And that must be respected. But, but these uh, representatives of media are so frustrated with that, that people don't think the same way that they do, uh, that they, uh, they commit any kind of uh, actions uh, against governments which are not representing the same mainstream line than they do. You must feel like you have an ally in President Trump. Uh, I always try to avoid commenting um, internal issues of other countries. But if you ask me, I think democracy uh, has won when, um, when President Trump turned out to be the winner because there were so many, so much influence uh, against him. We have seen on mainstream media, on pollsters, on political researchers, everybody. And then American people came out and, and voted in favor of him. Look, from Hungarian perspective, I can tell you that uh, his administration is much more favorable compared to the former one. Under President Obama's Democrat administration, there were direct and open attempts to interfere into our domestic issues open attempts to throw out the government, open attempts to create uh, challenges and problems. Our relationship uh, during the Democrat administration was, uh, was extremely poor. And now it's picking up, it's, it's much better. Uh, we understand we share the same kind of issues when it comes to border protection, when it comes to uh, migration, when it comes to preserving the Christian values, and it's good to know. I want to talk to you about the importance of Christianity to Hungary. First, though, about immigrants. Why does it matter if an immigrant who wants to enter Hungary is a Christian or a Muslim? You know, we have this debate in, in Europe um, whether multiculturalism is by definition better than a homogeneous country. And Hungarians had a very clear say on that. We want to keep Hungary as a Hungarian country. We want to keep Hungary as a Christian country according to the roots and, uh, and heritage. And look at, the, uh, look at the western part of Europe. Parallel societies have been created, which is always a source for tensions, for, um, for violence, uh, for uh, security risks. And this has been going on in the western part of Europe. Come on, how it is possible? How it is possible that in Europe, in the western part of Europe, decisions are about to remove the symbols of Christian uh, heritage or Christian faith from public areas. But we, we don't want that. I mean, we, we want to preserve our heritage, our culture. We are a very family-oriented uh, 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 nation. Um, you know, in the Constitution, we speak very clearly that uh, marriage is an institution between a man and a woman. Uh, we have received enormous attacks on that saying that we are retrograde, we don't understand modern developments, but we stick to it. We stick to um, the traditional definition of a family and the traditional definition of marriage. And you care about persecuted Christians in other countries. Tell us about this. You know, we have to understand that uh, Christianity became the most persecuted religion on earth. We have to stand up for the rights of the Christian communities all over the world. We have established a separate state secretariat in our government, which only has uh, one duty, to monitor the situation and the destiny of the Christian communities all around the world. And if any of them is in need, if any of them is under attack, then let's help immediately. So very recently we have spent 15 million euros 
on the reconstruction programs in the Middle East to reconstruct houses of uh, Christian families who had to leave from their homes, uh, to reconstruct and rebuild uh, churches. Now we are rebuilding uh, 40 Christian churches in Lebanon, for example. So, uh, and this is the policy we have to follow. Foreign Minister C. Arto, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for the opportunity.